keep me down, I'm going And if I ever fail, just know I'll go again I never quit, cause I know that every loss May lead to another win, I'm going up I bet when I land, they gon' tell me it's luck again See that I'm winning, it's harder to watch I'm setting the stage, you should give me my prize You ain't got no soul, you lacking the spirit You talk out your neck, I'ma show you I'm with it I've been really happy you to sit and watch me win again And win again and win again I know it's probably getting on me and when I'm sending them So if I ever win again, it's nobody the minimum I didn't have to sell my soul Yo, what's up and welcome back. Been a minute since we did one of these, so I thought, why not? Those cards that you saw in the intro are from my friend Bao. Bao and I actually filmed an entire reacting to cardistry video, but the audio got deleted, so that video will never see the light of day, unfortunately. But I wanted to give a shout out to Bao because he had 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I left his link below. If you wanna go follow him, he does some cool magic tutorials, and he's just a really great guy and a good magician. And he's also launching these playing cards. Uh, there's a link below where you can check him out so there you go bow welcome back guys today we're looking at our reddit uh we're at 33,000 members strong on this reddit community and i haven't checked it out in a while so hoping there's some gold in here so without any further ado like this video subscribe let's get into watching some of this stuff let's check this out all right we got bunch of bunch of jack of spades 110 of hearts nice Wow. This, so as impressive as this routine is, it's also incredibly confusing for a magician to watch. And I think that's, I think that's kind of the goal here is like, I'm confused as to what's going on. There's so many little methods at, at work here, uh, but the handlings are all very similar. Very, I mean, incredibly talented card handler. Wow. Everything about this routine is absolutely clean. Great job, 10 on 10. Couldn't have uh, done it better myself with 20 years of practice. That is great. Is this Shudogawa? I wanna see this. All right. Wow. Whoa. That is insane. That's not just great, that is insane. That is actually overpowered. Okay, one second, one second. The amount of times people have sent me this video is nonsensical. So many people send me this video. Apparently this guy's a big deal in Korea, big uh, magician. He's, you know, kind of like the Cyril or the Copperfield over there, I guess. Plus doing his thing on TikTok, looks like a K-pop star. So I get why people are freaking out about this guy already without even seeing his magic. Let's have a look. Okay, boom, boom. Okay, those are called perfect productions and they're actually insane to do and this is wild. What? You know, important to know there are no camera cuts here and this is not CGI. This is insane. That's insane. Yeah, I'll give it to you. That is remarkable. All right, what's it? Oh, some live magic. All right, she's got the card. Ah, a little Red Hot Mama action for Chicago opener. Now he's gonna leave it on the ground. Quick little note about that. Uh, if you're ever gonna leave a card on the ground and you're in a public place, especially because you know, you're performing a double lift, you're like, oh, this is this is not your card or whatever, and you go to put it down on the ground, a great, a great trick you can do, and this is I think my buddy Eric LeClaire showed me this a long time ago, is that you can take a card from any height and you drop it. I can drop it straight to the floor here and it will never flip over. Unless there's like wind or something, it will never flip over. It will always land down. So it's a nice little convincer when you're doing magic out in public. And if there's no wind, uh, obviously there's people here. So you might've been a little bit afraid uh, that the card would have turned over, but it's a great subtlety to just be like, fine, we'll just leave it here. And you just drop it to the ground. Uh, let's keep watching. All right, so she picks another card. Give it a, give it a snap over. No 
Such a great kicker. So obviously now the magician fails. She's like, oh, see, you did it wrong. And they forgot about the card that's on the ground. So there's always a great surprise. And they freak out. Like, that's such a great trick for anybody to learn. It's pretty easy and like some basic magic sleight of hand. But other than that, it's a really, really powerful trick. And I still do it to this day. All right, so I've been sent this one a few times. Magic 101 right there. So notice here, catches the ball, but he's got another ball. So it's basically like a false transfer here. And what's so great about this is the subtlety at which he does it. Because if I were to catch, let's say this is the ball and I had, uh, this is the ball I caught. This is the ball that I already had in my glove. If I were to like look down and do the, it becomes fishy. The fact that he just caught it and went like this so nonchalantly doesn't spike your your intuitive nature to think that something's up. So you just kind of let it fly. And that's a great lesson for sleight of hand and misdirection because misdirection, often body language will speak volumes over sleight of hand. Uh, and remember that because although you can get a move down perfect and you can say, watch, watch closely, as it goes into the deck, you know? And that's like some perfect sleight of hand. A better way would just be like, all right, uh, that's not your card? Okay, fine. Uh, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we'll put it into the middle. And so now the body language is supporting the story rather than the sleight of hand supporting the story. Uh, you need that body language there first and foremost. You can see that even though you can clearly see the other ball from this angle, it was his body language and his confidence of giving that other ball, not even paying attention to this one as if the one he was giving was the one he caught. That was the convincing thing. And you can see the spectator on the left know what's up. This one here, because she's like, no, it's the wrong ball. Uh, but the other one has no idea and she's completely floored. This guy in the red shirt's thinking, Yo, this guy, this guy's got game. He's got some game, so good job. One of my probably favorite accounts to follow is Richard Sanders because not only is he a fellow Canadian and from Montreal, Richard Sanders is an absolute legend in magic. He has created some of the strongest, most practical and streamlined effects that magicians use today. There are probably half dozen to a dozen, and it doesn't sound like much, but those tricks are used by every single magician on the planet. Uh, that's how prolific Richard is. And not only is he a funny guy, he's a comedian. I've seen him live. He's amazing, hysterical, and very likable. Uh, his sleight of hand is amazing, and he understands magic so, so well. So let's have a look at him performing some, uh, what looks like some cups and balls here. They change places, thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll do it for real. Wow. Look, we'll start over, look, two cups, two balls. One ball goes over here, one over here. I snap and they're both here. I don't understand this either. Look, we're gonna put a ball under each. In fact, I'll get rid of this ball and I'll get rid of this ball to make things easier because, well, it's back over here, sorry. If I, it's disappeared again. The story. It actually travels through the cup. Oh. There's a trap door, I think. That's the way it works. But if I put it back here, it travels over here, which I find crazy. Look, if I put it away, it travels back here once, twice. And that, my friends, is the big finish. Well, that's not the big finish, this is. <laughs> that's a lemon. Actually, that's a tennis ball, and this is ridiculous. Thanks, guys, if you enjoyed that, please like and share, it'll help me out a lot. See you next time. That is incredible. 33,000 likes on a Black Magic Effery. Uh, for good reason, Richard Sanders is an absolute genius. You should follow him, check him out on Instagram, Richard Sanders Magic, an absolute beast. And if you're looking for streamlined magic products to perform to, to everyday people, he's got the most fooling and just well-taught effects on the market. So go check that out. This guy says, one of my favorite slights. Let's have a look. Okay, so card goes under the rubber arm, or the rubber band on his arm. Ace is there. Little cut. That was an exceptionally clean uh, undertow. Uh, and if you know what undertow is, you know that that was exceptionally clean. So very well done. That was incredible. One of my favorite slides, probably one of the hardest slides to successfully do, uh, not even on camera, in person, or wherever. It's, it's an extremely difficult. It was actually... Uh, at first when that slight was uh, invented, so the slight basically, uh, there's a card shown 
and then there's an uh, and then when you turn the card over, there's another card, uh, basically. And this trick was done as a sort of warm up to get your hands warm. It, it was like a joke. It wasn't even meant to be a magic trick until people started getting really good at it to the point where they can do it in public in person, and it became one of the most uh, probably one of the most incredibly difficult sleight of hand moves that move monkeys like to do at conventions and show other magicians. And when you put it on video like this, it's just so seamless. So even though you might know how it's done, it's the actual doing of it that is so impressive. We got some rubber band magic here. Love that. What is happening? Love that. Wow. That is I want to try that. That is beautiful. I think I know what's going on too. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't, because I'm looking at his right wrist, and there, and and maybe I don't know what's going on. Maybe I thought I knew what was going on, but that is really good. Amazing. Perfect. No original. I think. All right. Let's see here. Very nice. What is this? What is this? What? So this is like, uh, I think Harry Blackstone's light bulbs, but done with like these orbs. Now, it's no secret how this works. I think we all know how this works, right? Low lighting, strings, there's no secret. But it doesn't take away from how magical this looks. And I think that's an important lesson to take away here is that the audience isn't looking to be fooled. The audience is looking to be entertained by magic. The audience is looking to leave the physical realm in which they live and temporarily exist within a fictional bubble. If that fictional bubble, sorry to go on a rant here, if that fictional bubble is at all compromised with the magician narrating or trying to overprove that certain things uh, don't exist or there's nothing up his sleeves, then that fictional bubble becomes popped and it can never be repaired. Never. It's a very delicate bubble you put that audience in. From the minute they see you, to the minute the trick ends, they have to believe they're in a fictional bubble. They can't believe the bubble is real. And no amount of trying to convince them that the bubble is real will help them think the bubble is real. It'll actually hurt the magic. The more you try and convince them that what they're seeing is real, the more it will hurt the magic. But if you are true to the fiction you created, if you are in that persona, if, you are, you, if you've personified that character of the magician, and you are true to that, then they won't feel like they're being lied to. Be true to your fiction and you won't lie. Try to prove that the fiction is reality and you are a liar and they will not enjoy the magic. This conversation comes up every so often with magicians where they're like, stop, perf stop uh, teaching magic on YouTube because then people can Google it. If people have to Google your magic, you're not doing the magic right. You might be doing the trick right, you might be doing the sleight of hand right, the misdirection, all the patter, all this, all that, but the magic was incorrect because you failed to put them in a space where they stopped caring about the method. And that's the truth. It's as simple as that. It doesn't go any deeper than that. So create that fictional bubble, kind of like he's doing, where you just let go of the method and you're kind of immersed in this magical experience. I know I'm going off on a tangent, but I just had to, I haven't talked to you guys about magic in a while and I had to re-up, okay? Here we go. My parents' birthday gift for me, they've seen Chris's video about his card collection. They made it all by themselves and even added ribbons to pull the decks out. I am amazed and grateful. Oh my God, this is beautiful. 
Dude, it's so awesome to see uh, parents being supportive of their children's hobbies and passions. You wouldn't believe the amount of stories that I get in my DMs and my emails about people whose parents uh, are basically against it and, and will disown them. Uh, so to see something like this is really nice. It really is wholesome and good job. It looks great. All sleight of hand, no gimmicks. Okay, already, hold on. Already, hold on. Already, hold on. Already hold on, that is insane. Okay, I know what you're doing, but already hold on. Yep. Great slide in, wow, what? Yeah, that fooled me. You know as soon as he brings out the stretch earrings and the crystal around his neck that he's got some juju going on, right? Like he's like, this guy's, this guy's like, he's got it, you know? One-handed practice. Very nice, little scissor cut, little deck flip. Cool little variation of the Charlier. Very nice. That's cool. Love one-handed stuff, especially in today's day and age because you can film with the other hand. So a lot of times I find myself doing a video and you know, instead of taping the phone on my forehead, I'll, uh, I'll film it like this. And so, you know, doing, doing one-handed things uh, can come in handy. No pun intended. <laughs> Something, he says. Very nice back palm. All right, little hand wash, showing both hands. A little sus, but the technique's there for sure. This is just great. This is invented by, I, mean, I forget who this was invented by, but it is so good and it is actually really difficult to pull that off. Uh, it's very convincing, even in person. Very, very good, very well done. Here we go. All right, four aces, seemingly. Looks pretty natural. We take the ace of clubs, wave it, it is now blank, very nice. Set it aside, I'm following. We got three aces left, the ace of clubs is no longer there, very good. Ace of diamonds is next, same thing. Very nice. Put that down. This is so far a very solid routine. And then again. And the last one, we're going in for a little bit of a different change here, a little bit of a flash, but I think well done in all. And now we're gonna turn these over and they're back to the aces. Now, had those been kings, I'd be on the floor dying. But very, very well done. Nice routine, very clean. Impossible vanish. Another one of these again. No idea what's happening. N no idea. No idea what's happening. Nope. And you wanna know why I have no idea what's happening? Because he's wearing a white shirt, okay? If that gives it away, I have no idea. That was my answer, was the color of his shirt. Unless there's editing involved, which I'm not going to assume because this is a pretty clean community. We don't accept that type of tomfoolery. Found on Facebook. You're full of tricks, wizard. <laughs> Impossible. Pretty funny. 99.99 pure sleight of hand. What does this mean? Wow, excuse me? I don't know which part of that is 0.1% not sleight of hand. That is, coin fools me, man. It just does. All right, let's see this. Wow, wait, hold on. Yeah, that is very clean. It's when he reaches in here to load. Right here, it is loaded. Look how quick that is. And, and the loading is justified by him placing the handkerchief or the silk in his mouth. It is, there's nothing cleaner. That is an absolutely insane dove production. All right, this guy says, don't blink or you'll miss it. Empty box. Okay. I already know what this is and it is beautiful. Great job. This is a trick invented by a good friend of mine, actually one of the consultants on Big Trick Energy, uh, Marcus Eddy, phenomenal thinker, loving human being, amazing inventor, and this is one of his creations. Uh, this actually fooled Penn & Teller on Penn & Teller Fool Us, this very card trick. Uh, so good, but it's not a card trick. That's how he explains it on Fool Us, but yeah. Undertow, here we go. This is another example of that move we saw earlier with a rubber band on this guy's arm. Undertow. First of all, that control, not, not the cleanest I've seen, because I've seen Tony Chang do this and no one does it cleaner. Even Xavier Spade. 
uh, both very clean, but here we go. That is undertow, and that is very well done. And that is when a magician does a magic trick with a deck of cards or any cards in general. It's not the magician doing anything at all, it's simply the cards. It's not that the cards are tricky, it's just that the cards have spirit, maybe the same one or not. I'll take that piece of plastic in my pocket so it can collect kind of like a receipt. Here's what we'll do we'll take and we'll tear this one off here. And here's what I mean. I see the, um, a little bit of a subtlety um, issue there, um, but spirit, you see, watch this next piece here. Look, I'll take it and I'll literally tear it right off. So what I mean is that they actually have the magic in them. Like you can take them, place them in your hands, go in at that missing piece, just a rub, the cards. Very nice. The cards and they cause the magic to happen. Very nice, very well done. Definitely could use some work with uh, the slights a little bit and the justifications. But other than that, you got the moves down. Yeah, it's always fun. Very nice. Retention vanishes just throw me off, man. They always look so clean. Nice, very nice. I think it's called the go change. That's right, that is the go change. We play it, boom. That is, dude, I never got the go change down. Let's see if I can, uh... essentially what you're doing is with a double lift, you're like lifting your thumb to lift that card behind so that you have room to snap that card down. That card needs to go down perfectly. I just, I was never good at it, man. So it's a really hard trick to do. Good for you. Well done, Chris, getting five mil subs. Thank you guys. I think that's where we're gonna end it today. Uh, five million is uh, no small feat and um, and I recognize that my start, my journey on YouTube started with magic and cardistry and uh, I wanna let you guys know that, that I've never given up on that. It's My channel hasn't changed from magic to puzzles. Uh, my interest in magic has shifted to puzzles. Uh, but that being said, it does shift back and lately I've been my brain's been going nuts because I got, I've got i been getting back into chess a little bit recently and I started coming up with a lot of magic tricks that have to do with chess and uh, I'm, I'm working on something. I'm working on something that might be worthwhile in filming and, and I'm, I'm just waiting. When you do content for a living, you can't force things and I could do one of these videos once a week and I know a lot of people would be happy. I, it wouldn't make me happy because I wouldn't have much to say and, and I'd be BSing my way through a video. So. Uh, every now and then I'll drop one of these, but I am working on some magic videos that I can't wait to share with you guys because I am feeling re-inspired with magic, especially since the world is opening up again and performance uh, to real people is uh, becoming a thing. You know, I've spent three months shooting a magic TV show where I lived and breathed magic every day for three and a half months plus editing. Uh, so it did burn me out a little bit, but... That being said, I'm excited to uh, bring you some more magic content. Hope you guys stick around for it. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.